and our digitalization strategy together with innovation, we have taken a decision to support such projects as resistance. So for, we're looking for ideas, we're looking for game changers, so that we are able to empower the youth in particular, but also enhance our business and remain at number one. I will now hand over to my colleague Dion to take you through, Dion and Exxon to take you through the actual challenges. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, I just would like to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is uh, John Abreit, so uh, I'm the IT manager for uh, production and people quality. So, uh, Sandra, thank you for all those uh, you know, marketing and sales. <laughs> well, I think we have to talk shop now, and we really all this stuff. And I think that's where we really need uh, your support. And we will need uh, some clever minds and clever ideas, and uh, I think at the end it could be a good operation and collaboration. So, maybe if you just go to the next one. Okay, for the first one, I can hand over to Said. Morning, everyone. So, my name is Said Adams. I'm a IT Solutions Architect, so my role is really a broad one. Um, I sit with some of our users in the business sometimes, I, I gather requirements, I sit with our developers and I do UI design, I do a little bit of coding myself sometimes, um, and then making sure that the solutions we develop actually function operationally as well, so I've got a big scope of, of, of work. So, Ms. Andrews mentioned something around game changes. And one of the big game changes we see at the moment is around big data and machine learning. So a lot of some of the stuff, we, a lot of the challenges have a bit of a big data or machine learning flavor. Um, this one particularly is around uh, welding data. So obviously because we are a manufacturing company, within our body shop we do a lot of welding. So we have robots that have a welding arm connected to it, and um, that performs welding. So in our body shop, our body shop is our most complex shop in terms of these robots and technologies, and um, it also is a source for a lot of problems. So what we want to try and do, we say machine learning is a game changer, so what we want to do is see, can we apply machine learning concepts, artificial intelligence, uh, big data, to see, can we uh, reduce some of the faults, some of the downtime around these, these uh, these uh, welding robots. So, I mean, that's a very, very simple overview in terms of the requirements. So our idea is we want to now, in future, start developing a whole bunch of uh, API models uh, that we can call from various different systems. So our goal is also not to uh, just have standalone machine learning capability, but that we can start to smartify some of our existing applications as well. So the idea is these applications will call these APIs perform some certain functionality, and then display it back to the user. So that's the first one. I don't know if there's any questions. I mean, I want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, there's a lot of assumptions I can make in presenting this, so I think the best will be if there's questions around, and that's, that's how we can go through some of these things. So we've been doing some of the, we've been delving into some of this ourselves already, and about what we found is that 70% of the time our, our task is trying to make sure that we get data in real time, and also make sure it's in a format that we can actually apply some of these machine learning models. So, so that is um, the biggest task that we see at the moment. Yes, yes, of course, yes, of course. So we will um, collect some data, uh, make sure it's at least cleaned and possibly uh, prepared as much as possible, and then um, we will obviously provide some specification in terms of what the, the different fields mean and stuff like that. Um, and, but for us, I mean, we also, because we're very close to the problem, sometimes we don't necessarily see the solutions, uh, the possible solutions that are out there. So I think 
part of this challenge is also to say we don't want to give too much information. We want to see maybe some sort of fresh ideas around how we can maybe solve. Yeah. So if I understand the challenge is to much like the sports analytics, you're trying to predict when the player is going to be injured. So instead of letting him play the full, you know, uh, uh, 80 minutes, 90 minutes, to be on the sport, you take him off at 70 minutes, so you stop the machine and do a service before that you do it. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, so um, one aspect is around machine failure. So can we predict when a welding machine is going to be down? But another aspect is also around quality. So sometimes um, we will produce a certain body and weld, but later on in the manufacturing process, it will produce a fault. So even when it's gone through paint shop and it's an assembly. So the idea is to also try and prevent those quality issues that we have going, going forward. So the one is, like you're saying, the predictive uh, of failures, but the other is also just uh, trying to predict quality issues around some of the data. Anything else? What does the data look like? Is it a, like movement? Is it like photo? So what the data looks like at the moment, there's certain what they call welding parameters. So what the voltage was, what um, uh, there's something called what the current was going through there, what the penetration of the actual weld is. Um, so those welding parameters have certain values, and that we have certain values that indicate whether a, a, a weld was a good weld or whether it was a bad weld. So the idea is how can we predict uh, bad welds in future, or what leads up towards a bad weld. Anything else? Cool. So I'll hand over to Dion, he'll take you guys through this one. Good, so uh, since I'm not the IT person really, but the industrial engineer, I'm focused more on processes. Uh, leave the big data to these guys. So uh, let's have a look at our second challenge, is really about quality. Quality product and how we ensure quality on the product. So uh, as you know, assembly lines. So we have the car coming down the assembly line, at some point, stops and we have the inspection station. So what do we do there? So we have people, they have usually a, a little bit of a mobile device, they walk around the vehicle, have a look and inspect certain things. So he goes, he scans the vehicle and the vehicle gives him a production number that's identified the vehicle and then with that information we download. So maybe this vehicle has some specific options, sunroof, or uh, you know, the specific uh, rooms or whatever is specific to this vehicle and immediately on his handheld device is downloaded the inspection we can call it steps or a recipe to say this is what you need to inspect for this vehicle and then the guy goes around and he inspects everything and then if it's a failure he's recorded and sent to the back end system but uh, immediately you can see uh, the human being there you have to go through everything you have to inspect it so, a lot of things, why can't we use some technology to support this inspection? So, we're really looking at, in this case, is to camera technology or uh, what we really say, image technology that's out there. And believe me, there's a lot. And uh, what we're looking is for a solution so that we can really tell the guy then, the camera, what it should do is maybe we focus the camera on the area and it's... Then we give the camera all the application information, it's looking at the area, it compares to a template, and the template says, oh, everything is fine according to the template, or no, we have a problem that is sent by an application to the back end, or to a PLC, or a logical control, so that we can make decisions on the assembly line. And that is the, the really the idea behind this. So what we're looking is to say, look out what camera technology or uh, Visual technology is out there, and for an application that you can really get this data, do the inspection, get it back to the back end, and that we don't have to have now maybe I have inspectors walking around for some things. I can put a camera there, or it can move with the car, and I can reduce also the work I can use these people at other places where it's more value added. 
So many questions on this. We're going to limit it to two questions uh, because of the number of topics, and then commitment with uh, extra time at the end, we can um, we can look at more questions. And the only thing is to keep the question uh, to, the, you know, to the mic. Sound gets through for the online. is to be a report structure of visual data. So currently what we're doing is we have visual data that goes to the banking systems and we have uh, failure reports, also all failures is recorded, and we have graphs and, uh, you know, we analyze also this, uh, this uh, information on this data to predict failures also if we can. So definitely all react on it, especially currently also in terms of our rework, because we, we try to actually do, if there's any problem, our uh, motto or our strategy is to fix it on the line. We don't want a car to come off the line and then send to a rework area and then rework it. If you can catch 80% to 90% of your faults online and fix it online, I mean, that is first class ones. Because the moment you move a car off, there's some other modifications, you know, so it's easier to fix it online. Answer your question. Thank you. Once again, you know, processes, logistics. So this is a bit of a different world. Uh, currently in our logistics, uh, we have a picking process, which is really a, a, a procedure means we use a, a sequential, or we can say a cyclic replenishment strategy. So we have cycles running, and every cycle we go around and we replenish certain parts. So what is currently happening is, uh, the guys in the warehouse, guys go and waiting in the cycle, then they will get a pick. You can say a pick queue or a pick list. And for the certain parts that they go to have, that they have to go and pick in the warehouse. And uh, but this is now fixed queues or fixed routings that the guy have to go. So because in the, the certain parts are stored in certain areas based on the, the volume, the size, and these kind of things. So these guys go and pick up. And especially with our small parts, we find you have these small bits with the parts in screws and nuts, and the guy picks everything from the list and he uses on a trolley. So this trolley then goes to the, the staging area in the assembly line. And in the staging area, here we run routes to replenish the lines. So the guy in there, he will take the parts in that trolley and he has to go and he has to replenish the parts in different stations. But uh, the, for him, it's quite a tedious job now because these bins is all out of sequence. So you have to go and look for the right bin to put in. But you have the part number you need, so you have to look where must this, this bin go. It takes time. In time, it spends money. So you want to reduce that space. So our challenge here is really to come up to do that. To come up with something, a smart algorithm, a model, to tell us how we can optimize this picking of the part in the warehouse. So uh, based on historical picking trends and maybe current picking trends, and then say, all right, we predict the picking trend for the next cycle will be this, and that will give us the opportunity to balance the workload also better. Because sometimes you get in one routing is all the picking at that cycle, Another one maybe have three parts. So you want to balance that work also. So that's one of the things. Another thing is maybe to see also in terms of our routing to sequence these bins. So that it makes it easier for the guy. So the way they pick and put the bins is in the same sequence they're going to deliver it on the line. And to just uh, you know put some flavor to it, we also say, yeah, maybe make use of smart devices. Smart watch, can't communicate this, nothing. I mean, there's technology out there. We play with uh, hollow lens, we play with uh, smart glasses, we, all these things are out there and maybe it can work. So, uh, that is the challenge out there. Do you have a look? Any questions? Any understand? 
Yes. Is this specific operation in London or is it also comparable to our international plants? Of course, we always benchmark for international and with other competitors. Uh, this challenge is specific for the East London plant. Uh, the East London plant is quite unique because we also, in terms of our logistics, we're quite a leader. A lot of things are automated, scanners, we reduce paper. Uh, our call off method, we call off the parts, it's all via the system. There's no manual call-off from the operator or anything like that. It's all calculated in terms of our cycling. So that's why this is specific a topic that we have that we want to well, improve and see how we can optimize it in the standard plot. Okay. So as you can see the challenges that we've discussed is close to us. It's, it's really close to us and problems that we have. And we want to make it practical. We don't want to have any theory things, you know, this kind of one makes it practical and we can find some value add to implement or a good idea to say we can work on this and that will optimize our processes. Cool. So my name is Tim, who also had on tour. Financial learning for us in South Africa. We've also been recognized within the diamond community as one of the leaders in terms of innovation as well. So um, I think we are, why we are also here today is we want to strive to continue to be the leaders and to strive um, to drive the direction towards other plants as well. So our strategy is to come up with some of these things and also now speak to our sister plants in Germany, the USA, China and say, okay, this is what we've come up um, and how can you apply to other parts of the world as well. Okay, so, so this one is around um, the basic term of conversational systems. So that means it comes in two sort of flavors. The first one being, uh, being a, a chatbot, and the second one being uh, a, a virtual assistant that you a virtual assistant that you can speak to, but now applied to a specific manufacturing context. So the idea would be um, sometimes if I'm sitting in a meeting and we're having a discussion, and sometimes I need a specific figure from one of our systems. And it's a little bit inefficient now to go into the system, filter, do a report just to get one specific value. And we're saying there's value in just saying, okay, hello, my virtual assistant, give me the top 10 faults in the body shop for today. And it will give me that back that information. So it will streamline the whole process and then we see there's this value in that as well. So that's the first scenario. The, the second scenario would also be where I can, uh, via chat interface, um, say I want to, for example, log my leave. And I can say, hi, I would like to log my leave. It will reply back and say, okay, when would you like to log your leave? Next week, Tuesday. Would you like your standing to be? Um, they also, on leave next week, please choose someone else and, and follow this sort of conversational um, way to get work done. So I can sit at home and chat and, and log my leave quickly. I don't have to open up my laptop, log in, and then log a leave request. Um, so the idea would also be if I want to get manufacturing information, I can do that the same way. Type a little message, what were the top faults for this week? And it'll reply and say your top faults were X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the, the question was just to clarify what we're trying to achieve. Um, are we trying to achieve a, a quicker way to retrieve information and to streamline the, the information that we get from some of our systems? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So the idea is we will start with, uh, the idea is we want to start with simple sort of queries, but eventually once uh, the intelligence of this little system will start to grow and eventually it will tap into some of our uh, models as well and start doing trends and it will actually start prompting us 
So it'll say, hey, this is happening in your environment, you should probably have an event. So that, this would be the first step to see how it would fit into our environment, but the idea is to also integrate it into our whole workflow of how we use information. So the question on this challenge, have you explored other technologies for dating, so that, uh, like Watson, for example, uh, which we provide some or you think for something other than that? So the question was, have we explored other technologies um, such as Watson and uh, Microsoft Cortana? Um, yeah, we have seen uh, some of the things like that, but when trying to interface with some of these sort of bigger companies, there's a whole lot of infrastructure that needs to be in place for that first. So we have to set up power connections, we have to set up stuff like that. And I think here, we're trying to test the, the waters. So can we, can we set up just something simple? Um, what is the value in, in this sort of figure? That way we can get feedback to see, does this actually make sense for us to use in our manufacturing environment? Um, yeah. um, so relate to that, what is your stance on using external uh, SDKs or services from bigger companies? Is that uh, pro or? So the question was, um, what is our stance on using external uh, SDKs? So, like he said, uh, Watson and stuff like that. I, I think it's we pretty open. Um, it's just in terms of what what can we get quickly to test in our environment, um, and what's going to be the most feasible. So I think maybe that's something key to keep in mind. And I think for us, the main thing is just to see um, how can we start simple. Um, I know Alexa has a pretty uh, Easy API to speak with as well. So, um, yeah, so we, we, we pretty open and flexible. Okay. So, in terms of, are you looking at a kind of mobile application for Microsoft Cortana? Yeah. Um, and then, like, so, I think it can be, so, yeah, so let me just cover the question. So, the question was, um, are we looking for it to run on a mobile device? Um, I think there also, we pretty flexible. I think mobile for the chat interface, definitely. Um, for the virtual inter uh, interface via voice, that will have to obviously be something through like Alexa, Google Home, uh, stuff like that. And then also, I mean, the same chat interface would run on your desktop client as well. So I'm busy checking my emails. Oh, let me just chat here and, and log a lead request. Okay. Well, the interesting thing is I've got an app like that. Okay, so we need to chat, we need to chat after this. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, so let's maybe just go on to the next one quickly. Okay, yeah, so, so this is also a, an interesting one. So this is a concept we sort of call Uber maintenance. So it doesn't mean super maintenance. Um, it's based on the whole Uber concept of how you find a driver to get to one location or not, but it's, it's based on our maintenance. So the way that, the way the process works is we have cell technicians that look after our robots and um, they are sort of the first level of support. So if something breaks down, they go and they fix the robot. If, they, if it's a, a bigger problem and they need assistance, then they go to um, maintenance of support specialists. And you have different levels there as well. So you have level two, you have level three, and then you have an actual specialist. So the idea is the way they do it at the moment, if a Celtic has a problem, he needs to call the maintenance help desk, and then the maintenance help desk needs to find someone who can actually help the Celtic out. Then the maintenance guy goes there and they do they help the guy and then the, the job is completed. So we say we want to change the way we look at how we do maintenance on these, uh, these topics as well. So the idea is um, a Celtic would say, okay, I have a fault, he can maybe log a fault on his smart device and say I'm in this location, um, this is the type of support I think I need. Then um, that sort of alert will go through to all the support technicians and they will see okay there's a couple of open alerts and they will say okay I'm the closest to this area and I have the specific uh, expertise to solve it, I will acknowledge this and 
then the Celtic will be informed and to say, okay, um, your support person is five minutes away. The support person then comes, he uh, helps the guy, and then he closes the fault. Then the Celtic can then rate his support that he got as well. So the idea is then we're also introducing certain gamifications, so Celtics sort of organize themselves to try and uh, resolve certain maintenance topics instead of a help desk coordinating and doing the escalation process itself. Questions? Yeah, so the, the question is do we really have a ticketing system uh, for this? So, we have a ticketing system for our IT related topics. I don't know if there's a ticketing system for the maintenance topics. I think it gets logged, it's, it gets logged in our SAP system. Um, so that matrix work needs to be done. So that will probably still happen somehow, but it will be automatically interfaced via this um, system. The idea is we want to remove someone having to sit and receive a phone call and then coordinate who needs to get, because that then also leads to um, a waste of time. So if, if I'm logging a, a problem on my device as a cell technician, I'm saying I need help at this level in this location. Um, we can also already have an overview of where are all the spots where we need where we need help, and we can dispatch help a lot quicker to those areas. Uh, uh, the application does, does something similar to that, okay. and uh, they also can help us with the other drivers as well in all the locations where they are based. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's. So, the comment was just that um, they've developed something similar that could help us in this regard and uh, help some of our drivers and how to locate some of our drivers. So, maybe that will also be something we can chat about. Thanks. Okay. Um, so this is also a very similar sort of concept. So uh, the idea around this one is um, within our plant, our plant is very big, um, and we have a lot of meeting rooms all over the plant. And we also have a lot of visitors that come to our plant as well, whether it be suppliers or, or that sort of thing. And what needs to happen at the moment is sometimes you would have to go from one end of the plant all the way to the other end of the plant, to collect the visitor, so he knows exactly where to go to. to know. So this is some sort of um, application where once he comes to Mercedes Benz, he can either scan a QR code or uh, open up some type of uh, app on the tablet that's sitting there and say, I'm looking for this person uh, for this a specific meeting or whatever. And it will give him some directions in terms of a plant layout to say, okay, you should be in this room and it's three kilometers away and this is how you get there. So it's like, sort of like a Google Maps type of a thing, but for a local sort of uh, in-house plant scenario. So to help getting people to uh, one end of the plant uh, from another, but also to help find certain individuals if need be. Yeah. So, and if it's also, if they're coming to see a supplier, um, or a supplier needs to see one of us, they know exactly where to go to. Cool, uh, I think there's a couple more. So I'm just gonna hand over to Axel, and he's going to talk about some of our uh, challenges from Victoria's side. Cool. Good morning from my side as well. First of all, I have to apologize for the German English. There has to be a German in the room, a German company. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, if you don't understand, you just uh, ask. Uh, now we've heard from the colleagues uh, how they're producing or they, how, what challenges they have in producing the cars, and you would think actually um, they are producing so wonderful and wonderful cars, so it can't be a challenge to sell these cars anymore. But it is, I can promise you, there is still a lot of challenges out there to really sell them. What we have for you now, we have four problem statements or four challenges, but these challenges are just ideas or just serve as ideas. There is so much happening in the space around, in the 
retail space with disruption. So whatever idea you have to disrupt retail space is more than welcome. Let me show you the first one. The first one is a challenge around the retailers. We call it vehicle inspection solution. So just imagine you come with your car to the dealership, you wanna you wanna go for a service and you wanna digitalize this complete process around vehicle inspection mode. You drive in with your car, then the digitalization must start already. The system is supposed to recognize your car, for example, by recognizing the number plate, then the service advisor automatically can read the data out of our customer, customer database, and the service advisor can read you this name. The service advisor then should know about the vehicle history, should know about the customer uh, history, and then the, uh, the service advisor should be on a digital way it should be allowed for him to capture the vehicle if there are any damages in on the vehicle and we really do a complete inspection around the vehicle in a digital, in a digital way. And really, there is no guidance around the solution or whatever you come up with is more than more than welcome. For sure, it has to be on a mobile platform, but whatever comes into your mind is more than welcome. Well, the question is, does it need to integrate into a customer management software? Yes, ideally yes, but let's start lean. So in the first MVP, I would say we, it, it must not be an automatic in, uh, integration, but on the long run, definitely yes. Yeah. Next one is a similar one, also in the retail space. And I think all of you guys know how messy the used car pages sometimes look. Especially when you look at the pages, some of the cars are, are there, there are no photos in, or there are bad photos in, or the interior pictures are missing, or the background is bad, or what, what, what. So what we want to do with this challenge, we want to professionalize the, the, the process of taking pictures of a used car. So when a dealer trades in a used car, then this app is supposed to really guide the dealer how, which pictures has to be, be taken, from which angle the picture, pictures has to be taken. Ideally, you want to have a unified background behind the vehicle and, and not, not asking the dealer to really put up banners or whatever, so we want to have this digitalized. So that is an app really to professionalize the, the capture of a vehicle and later on when we have captured the, 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 the pictures of the vehicle, it should automatically flow, flow into our online sales platform that we can automatically design the use of it. Sure you can. Well, who wants to talk to me afterwards? <laughs> Next one. Now we go a little bit more into the big data space. It, we call it personalized offer or next best agent. Uh, I think each of you, like me, gets thousands of emails and, and SMSs which are just not relevant to us. And what are we doing? We're just ignoring it or we even get grumpy because we get a lot of messages which, which do not do not really or which we don't have relevance to us. So what we want to do and in, in which space we want to go is really personalized marketing. So we want to really break it down and come to a really target-oriented marketing where we only send out marketing messages which are relevant to you. Good. Good. That means you see, you see there on the, on the right side, uh, to do that a lot of input data is required. So what we have is, is our internal data, so when we know our customers pretty well, then we, we have all the data which we can have about our, data, about our customers already. What we do not yet have is all data about the customers out of social media. And it's definitely possible to read the data out of social media and harmonize it with the internal data and then learn much more about the customer to really personalize it. Yes, we do. The, the, the question is if we gather data, the, the, the data from our dealers and the structure of the data, then yes, we, we know in the end all the data from a customer, from the whole interaction, our whole customer journey between us and the, and the customer. So we know all data from, or we have all the data from the dealer, 
and we have all the data, for example, when you go to a service, we know when you have been uh, for service, we know what happened this year, we, uh, and uh, the structure is mainly as a Question is about the sources, so we need more sources of What specific and data are you looking for in terms of the personalized offer? From like what what data aspects from a customer side are you looking for together? The question is which which data we want to collect. Uh, let's come from from the from the flip side. Where in the, end, the idea is to really have a perfect offer, and a perfect offer must not be to sell you a new vehicle. The perfect offer for you is dependent on where you are in the customer journey. Uh, it might be selling you a new, new, new vehicle, but it might also be just offering you a, new, you a service appointment or offering you in future a mobility service. Maybe your, your, your demand is just to drive or to, to get a, mobile, mo a mobilized service to come from point A to point B. Point B. That might also be the perfect offer for you at the, at the moment in time. So it's now, then it wouldn't be sexy. <laughs> the sexy part starts when we can convert uh, yeah, BMW, Audi, whatever types. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last one, now we come to the North Star. And I'm really excited, or would be excited if I would see cool stuff here. So that is a little bit into the future, going away from ownership. And uh, thinking a little bit more, yeah, what, what might happen in, in, in two, three years? Uh, do we still want to own vehicles or is really a mobility service for us? And there we want to really get your, gather your ideas and see what, what you would come up with. And that's really now looking further and really looking into the pure mobility demand. And you might have a mobility, de mobility de demand for example, in the morning you want to get, get from your home uh, from your home to the office in the evening, you want to get to the gym and from the gym to the bar. And really breaking this mobility services down into, into smaller little pieces and generating offers and generate also platforms where the customer can book these offers. And that must not be only Mercedes services. Then there you can also think about a combination of services between us public transport or taxi service or Uber providers or whatever is out in, in that space. And please also keep in mind that you as customer, you might have different different uh, requirements. You might have just an A to B transport, or you might, for example, go over the weekend, you want to go to Brigo Park, then you, then you need maybe a bigger car, or you want to have an SUV, or you might also have a car for two, three weeks when you, walk, when you, when you go for a longer holiday. So keep everything in mind what a customer might expect from us. Great. I think that's it. There, there will be space for more questions at the end, but just a little bit on, okay, launch lab, ecosystem, we build cool stuff, we have cool partners, and then the Mercedes specifics of Okay, what are we looking for? What are the opportunities? Is the remote power? I'll do models now, so uh, A little bit about the launch lab, and really maybe some proof cases of where value has been added to partners like Mercedes and startups like you uh, previously. And I think maybe because I really like our partner attack, I'm going to use them as an example because it, I think a lot of what you were talking about is also beneficial for them, especially the mobility side, building a smart city is a, a different challenge that's been going on. But last year, an example of what happened through one of these things was 86 ideas were submitted to Attack, and Attack builds retail space across Africa and Europe, okay? Um, 86 ideas came in, we shortlisted 10 of those, 11 of those, to pitch in a Shark Tank kind of thing. Out of that, four came in, or, sorry, six came into the launch lab and then two of those fell away quite quickly. One of them they immediately started doing business with, and that's Spatial Edge in the corner. Thanks for the questions. And the other three, we took through a bit of an incubation process, and one of those they've already taken a 10% stake in, and the other one they're meeting tomorrow to talk about further investment in that different company. So that's, that's actually what we're looking for in this kind of engagement of what partners can we connect them to if it's, okay, 
Mercedes isn't interested in the $2 million investment, but what other angel investors and VCs do we have connection to with the proof that a, a client like Mercedes-Benz is interested? Then that automatically ticks some boxes in a lot of investors' minds. So how can we help position you with different VCs and angel investors to take that forward? So that's one quick example of something that happened. It really it closed in July, so it's a very recent story of some things that have happened. Uh, where to now from this? So really right now you can go and submit your entry on our website. So launchlab.co.za forward slash MBSA innovation. All right. Launchlab.co.za forward slash MBSA innovation. And basically I can't find the right position not to be in someone's way. So I'm just going to hover around the front. Uh, so there's going to, we anticipate at least 100 things coming in for this Mercedes-Benz challenge. And then after that, we'll shortlist some things. So we'll, we'll be taking in entries through the month of September. And from there, we'll shortlist what is interesting up to 20, somewhere between 10 and 20, between concepts and ideas. So you don't need to be turning revenue already. You don't need to be profitable. You don't even really need wireframes. If the technology is there and you have the concept there, rather than before going to build a prototype, submit the entry, here's the idea, here's some of the pieces I'd like to put in. Let me work with Mercedes-Benz to actually work out that prototype together with them, with the client that's already there waiting to put money into this thing. Because during the course of October, there will be like a Shark Tank uh, kind of Dragon's Den pitching event here the 25th of October. But somewhere in there, we'd like to take the shortlisted companies, whether it is a very early stage startup, a concept, or if you're a startup that's already turning over revenue, take them to East London to engage with the different experts within Mercedes-Benz to see, okay, hands to the coal face, what are we actually working with, with this challenge? So where to now, if, you're, if you have ideas and concepts, there will be a short listing and then a bit of a preparation phase in October where we help you polish the pitch. Because if it is just a concept, where could we help you get the right packaging to different people in Mercedes-Benz that aren't here, that need a little bit of, uh, not everyone is as innovative and forward thinking as maybe these guys are. They have people beyond them that you also need to figure out how to pitch to. And how can we help you package that to where we open the most doors for you within Mercedes-Benz and their partners. And then there will be the pitching platform on the 25th. And then after that, we, we have partners in Cape Town, the lead iterator, uh, a couple of guys that we've connected to, to help build a prototype. Lean startup vibes, just go out there, get out of the building, talk to people, build something, measure that feedback, put it back into uh, the product, and then keep going. Really, even working a business on email and WhatsApp sometimes before you write a line of code. So we do a few months of that, and at the end of that, there's another filtering process where you might filter yourself already because you can see no one's actually willing to put money into a product like this after doing that. You haven't built anything. You haven't spent any money on the tech, which is a huge win in itself, not having the waste of the effort labor. And then after that, if there is... Uh, value in that prototype that comes out of that process, then there's a kind of a pre-accelerator thing that we do to put just the basic governance and controls around the business, like legal structuring, finances, financial reporting, valuation, marketing strategy, that any investor, we built it according to Life Capital's due diligence and what they look for when they take in investors. So we got their tool, we built the program really to make you knife ready or grindstone accelerator ready. And that's what the second phase of that is. So that's going to go over the course of next year. The dates are on the website when you go and sign up. And that's if you're a concept or idea. There's a parallel program where really, if you're a mature startup, it's the same process, but with a little bit of tweaking, you'll still go to East London to engage with the experts with Mercedes-Benz. But then it's really just access to market off the bat, and then us working with you to make sure it's plugging the right kinds of holes with Mercedes-Benz. So it's really just an access to market exercise if you have something that's existing already in the market. Um, yeah, and that, uh, that liftoff at the end there, this is basically what those things look like. Companies come into the launch lab anywhere between 12 months to 24 months, so a year to two years is typically 
how long we're engaging with companies working with them until they've outgrown us. That Lean Iterator program that will start mid-November. That's really just a 12-week program that helps you get a viable product out the door. So working with you, getting access to customer Stellenbosch is actually quite an interesting little uh, closed ecosystem where you can test a lot of stuff and get some prototypes out because of the diversity and how focused it really is. Uh, and then that will help you get the viable product out. And the Countdown is a 15-week program. That's the one built on Knife Capital's uh, due diligence form. And that's a 15-week program just to get the parts put together so that it can become a vehicle that can take on financing, either investment or all the governance is important to large customers like Mercedes because they want to make sure they go through that to bring you on, you're going to be around for a while. So all of those governance things are very important. And that's also what that does. So it helps you get a proven business that you can go and say, look, I'm going to be here for 10 years. Give me your money so I can add value to your business. Um, awesome. That's the, the end of the formal presentation, really. I know there are a few questions on Facebook that came through. Um, but and maybe there's one question that always comes out, so I'll just kind of preempt that. There is no equity required for any of this stuff. The only equity that changes hands in this building by virtue of showing up is that which is already held by the university. So university research the university owns. If you submit an idea, and if you're recording this to make sure it's good, uh, we can't go back on it. Um, any idea that gets submitted to this process, there is no equity requirement for that, just for participating, all right? That can be a conversation down the line with Mercedes-Benz and you directly, or with investors directly, but the Launch Lab does not take equity just because you submit a form, all right? Uh, any other questions, Launch Lab or Mercedes-Benz related? Maybe we have 15 or 20 minutes? Yeah. So what is the interface between the launch lab, you guys, and Mercedes-Benz? Well, basically, these guys have jobs, so they don't have time to engage with every single one of you. And however many dozen are on the Facebook live stream and the other hundred that are going to be applying to this after that. So there needs to be some kind of filtering process to make sure that they only get the top of the class of that stuff. So the attack thing I gave an example of last year, 86 entries, maybe 20 of those should have even been put before the attack expo. So we play a bit of that role to say, is this even, vi even viable? Are there five other things out there that are already doing the same thing that are probably better than what this thing is, or six or 12 months further down the line? So we play a bit of that role. And also, we have quite a network of angel investors and VCs. So if you are engaging with the Mercedes-Benz team, and for them, really less than something like 50 million. It's probably not even interesting to talk about because it's going to cost more to do the admin. But angel investors, they have half a million, two million, five million, whatever. We have quite a broad network of guys like that that put money into very early stage things and concepts that they would have the network to. So if there is an interaction, we can make a phone call, organize a meeting with an angel investor, and so we, we form a connecting point role to make sure that whatever support you need, you get that if it is funding or the rest of our partners that are always coming to look for things. Any other questions? It doesn't have to be me. I can hand the phone over, the microphone over to these guys. There's one from Facebook. And it's a question for really more you guys. What does the current system landscape look like? And I think that's overall the different systems. Could you provide us with an idea of how the architecture looks? Like Microsoft, SAP, Workday, et cetera, both currently and future plans. Cool. So that's a very complex question to give a simple answer 
interesting, but just in terms of uh, some of the technologies we use. So um, in Gillies London, for our in-house developed apps, we, we mainly in Microsoft Shop, so .NET, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, stuff like that. Um, for our ERP stuff, we, we're using SAP. Um, I know in uh, Pretoria, they've also got a big SAP environment over there. Um, they've got an Oracle environment for, for their backend stuff as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's about the simplest answer I can give you without going into too much detail. Just to add on to that, don't limit, limit yourselves on what we have. I'm not interested in, in any application we have. I'm interested in, in something I can not yet. If they use Microsoft and Outlook, then they probably don't know about Slack. And like one of those things, it's like, I can do you one on Slack now in about a half an hour. Maybe not that, but yeah. But another interesting thing about Mercedes-Benz and some other connections that they have is uh, this, they have an initiative, I don't know what it exactly would be called, but a group within the business called Startup Autobahn that's based in Stuttgart. And it's basically a global launch lab kind of vibe where they have multiple accelerators in about 20 different locations in Asia, America, and Europe. And then getting plugged into this ecosystem here locally, the Startup Autobahn guys are looking at what's happening here to see what they can take overseas and also what can come in and add value. So it's also an interesting network to start to get into with a broader initiative that they have. Thanks, maybe I can also just add to that because that makes the opportunity more attractive and uh, so really get going. Because we have uh, we've talked about startup, this is now the first one in Africa that we started. I mean, we had one in Singapore, we had one in China, quite big states, also in Germany, it's quite common. And uh, yeah, off the record, maybe I can already say there's a good opportunity for the <laughs> for the the start of the for the, the new guys on the block to uh, join one of these startups and pitch their ideas in Germany, which I think is a really immediately international market exposure to those kind of things. And also for the current startups, I think it's very important. Uh, that's why we included the current startups, because uh, us company enterprise development is really big. And uh, to become part of our supply and input and, and part of the enterprise development is really a big opportunity. And, uh, I mean, okay take your places, so that, that makes it really attractive. So any other last burning question? Yes. Sorry, this column. <laughs> I don't know where to stand. is which of those 10 challenges are the most urgent to solve and I have an imagination of where that would go. I would say we give you one each, one for production and one for sales and marketing. And sales and marketing is definitely the next best action because of sales marketing. That's what we are heavily working on. Um, I'm really talking about the manufacturing side. For us really it's uh, driving efficiencies and using technology to drive the efficiencies. Uh, so in our plant already, I mean, we, digitalization is one of the big things that we're driving at, and wherever we can use technology to drive efficiencies, is be interesting. Um, I may be a bit of a different outlook to, to that question. I would say solve the problem you best suited to solve. Um, I mean, that's going to drive our interaction a lot better. Just because something is important to us and you're not maybe capable to solve it. Um, I think all of these, I mean, we had tons of ideas, so I think all of these are, are important in some cases. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, try and go for the ones that you feel you are best equipped to solve. And maybe 
just one comment too, as we hear the challenges that these guys have, these are current burning things that are burning their fingers today and yesterday, and they need urgent solutions for it. But even maybe to throw a bit of a spanner, there's things that they don't know because they're too close to it. And for one example, uh, the visibility, the blue logo towards the top right. Last year with the attack challenge, they were looking for retail things. So how can we track people that walk around our malls, like the Mall of Africa, Angus Mall? How can we better better market things to people that are in our malls? We have this thing called Fatty, which gives everyone free Wi-Fi that we can track them as they go around our properties. They are watching you if you log on and use a free Wi-Fi. They're like, okay, give us all these marketing ideas and how to distribute things better through our properties. What they weren't thinking of was a different solution and uh, the team at Visibility, they're like, what if you could predict tenant defaults and predict that a tenant applying to be in your property, that actually it's going to be a waste of your time and money to onboard them because they're not going to make it where you are. So they built a solution that could, one, predict whether or not a new tenant would default in the first however many months if they brought them on, looking at different economic data, the demographics of the area around that space, how far people are traveling in and out. And also, if you can read the, the trends in the economy while you have a tenant in that property, can you predict, look, in three months, they're going to have some trouble. And they built that solution, pitched it, and that's been the most successful one with attack that was nowhere on their radar as a solution when it started out. But once they showed it to the CFO, he jumped out of his chair and he's like, I want this now. I want this right now. I build it. They gave them what they needed. They took what they needed and now they're starting to roll it out in their properties really across the continent. So don't be afraid to really blow their socks off with something they haven't thought about if you know it's really going to change the business. So we can answer the question that you are you open to the broader picture as well. Yeah, yes, definitely. I mean, I think, um, like you said, some of the problems are very close to us because we deal with them every day. But I think um, for you guys as startups and um, entrepreneurs, you also now um, interface with other companies and what problems they are, are seeing, but also the technologies itself. So I think we are very open to say, um, you've seen some of the things we've we've looked at now, I think it's, it's important also to say, what do you guys think we should be focusing on? Um, uh, this is the challenges that we have now, but maybe you guys can see what challenges we are going to have in the future to help prepare us for those as well. So I think, like I said, my expectation from this is to definitely be a dialogue. I mean, this is a learning experience of us getting to learn and know each other um, from both sides. So I think definitely we are open to, to that. Just one more remark towards that. Um, we, we don't like to be disrupted. We want to disrupt. And for that, we need ideas which come from outside because we are far too close to what we are doing each and every day. So whatever crazy idea you have, and you are, you might be a customer, your parents might be a customer, or whatever, you, you, you can bring and tell, tell us what we do not yet know or what we ne never thought about is more than but it is easier to open the doors to those 10 challenges because it's already open. Yeah. Just a quick question. Um, the documents that were on the board, yeah. um, is there going to be online more in-depth documents of what you guys want, what, what your expectations and the requirements? So more in-depth than that might be limiting, but at least what's here we can put on the website to okay. make it available to everyone. And then whatever data, if there is data released, we can put it in a zip file and also have it downloadable on the launch that website too. So we'll facilitate these slides and whatever data that gets made available to address these challenges. So the question is, what are the logistics of the floor data? For the logistics optimization, is there floor data for how the factory is arranged? Yes, we will uh, supply this with a data set of the welding and these things. We will supply the, the, the data set, the, typically of the picking cycles, the routing, the whatever, so that, uh, we, that you have that basics in there to, to be able to, to, to come up with some. And the locations. And the locations, yes. Now we will put that data, we will put 
put the data together so that you at least can, can understand and also see it and come up with something that makes sense with it. In that, in that sense. Okay. Yes. Now, the question is, is our PLCs uh, connected to a central system, so like SCADA? So, uh, we have our own system that we developed, but uh, all our PLCs are connected to a, to a monitoring system. And uh, also, uh, that you get all the data collection in the system, and that talks to the backend systems. Maybe if there's one more question, otherwise it's time for coffee and snacks. I see the snacks are out. Yeah, and if we're milling around afterwards and there's questions that come up, just feel free to chat. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming to the Mercedes-Benz South Africa Innovation Seminar, Information Seminar, and we look forward to receiving your entries very soon. Cheers.